Hi guys, uh, my name is Prashant Kadur. I'm based in uh, Holtzville, New York. Holtzville is uh, where most of the, if, if you guys were working with Symbol, that's where uh, Symbol was based out of. Most of the uh, mobile devices work is still going on in Holtzville, centered there, but there are other places where the work goes on. And so, I lead a, a bunch of teams, including tools and utilities. If you guys know EMDKs and Data Wedge, EHS, MX, uh, those are to, those come under tools and utilities. We also have the solutions applications. I'll explain it a little bit. And then we have developer experience, and then my teams also do pre-sales engineering engagement. Okay? So let me just talk about what, what the agenda today is. Zebra has been giving you all these tools for productivity tools, right? Such as EMDK, Data Wedge, EHS. They're one way or the other, they're utilities and tools that helps you uh, either configure the device or increase the productivity. Now, we are also giving you more and more tools. We are getting into the solutions part of it four verticals and giving you tools to uh, add your value adds and then create your solutions on top, on top of what we provide. Our hardware, our software, and you create your uh, line of business applications. So before we start with this, let me just do a, a, a short polling here. How many of you are using Zebra mobile devices? All of you. Uh, you don't come. Yeah, I'm a distributor. <laughs> <laughs> we don't use anything. Oh, no, no, I meant him. <laughs> okay. Uh, and how many of you are using Android devices? Still on CE Windows Mobile? Oh, wow. So, so some of you raised your hands for both CE Windows Mobile and Android. Are you in, in transition? Yes or no? Hopefully. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. And um, how many of you are already writing applications in Android? Good. And just uh, so right now the solutions I mentioned, we have four verticals that we are targeting. I don't have everything here for four verticals. I'm hoping in the next few months we will make more information available for you. I have captured a very few here, but there is a lot more work going on. So the one is transportation and logistic. That's the vertical, healthcare, and we have warehouse, and then the retail. So those are the four things that we are focusing. That doesn't mean that we don't have other, other else, but these are the main verticals we are focused on. So my role is to create applications for these solutions applications to help you develop solutions, tools to help you develop solutions, SDKs to help you develop solutions. Okay? And uh, <clears throat> one last question is, uh, how many of you are doing native Android development? Web development? Uh, you guys are using Enterprise Browser by any chance? How about you, sir? Cordova. Cordova. Okay. Uh, for those native developers, do you guys use EMDK? And for scanning purpose, EMDK, Data Wedge? EMDK. Okay. So we have another session tomorrow, comparison between what are the scanning options available, EMDK, Data Wedge, and why you should pick one over the other. We'll try to solve some of them. Um, so, all right, so let, so this one is not necessarily a solution. Well, you can say this is a solution, lifeguard. I'm not gonna discuss lifeguard here. That wasn't my intention. How many of you know what lifeguard Zebra is offering? Ooh, okay. Um, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm definitely not gonna get into this because Bruce Willens, uh, he has at two o'clock, I think, he has a session on this. Please do attend. If you are curious as to what the lifeguard is, I can read you some of that. 
basically it's the extension of life cycle of Zebra Android mobile devices, how we do supporting, what kind of patches we give you, how we distribute the patches, all of that will come under, and why it is so important that you have the, you understand lifeguard and why it brings. Yeah? Uh, my purpose was to, since you guys are developing a lot of line of business application, I wanted to bring your attention to this. Moving forward, well, all these days, we were distributing voice updates with EMDK and Stage Now. So if there are new features available in EMDK or Stage Now or Data Wedge or MX, you could download the OS update, install it on your device, and uh, you will get, if not all, most of those features. Moving forward, because of several reasons which I'm not going to get in here, right, is we won't be distributing device updates through EMDK or uh, Stage Now, okay? What we will provide still is the SDK add-on for the PC that will still be provided through the EMDK and Stage Now installations. So you can write your application to target the latest features on the PC, but in order to run the application and use those features, you got to have the you may have to have the latest uh, update. That there is a different way of downloading and installing. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to say here. So we won't have OS update moving forward distributed with the MDK in stage now. Instead, the update, updates, bug fixes, and Google patches will be distributed in one of the following method. If there is a new BSP coming, a new MR, new BSP coming, it will usually include the latest components. So you, you could update your devices and then you get the latest features. Or as part of the lifeguard security patch update, you will get updates once a month on most devices or once in three months on some devices, depending on how old the devices and OS are. And that's how you, the, the updates will be distributed. And those updates are not limited to EMDK or Data Wedge or Stage Now. It will have other uh, components as well, as well as the Google patch. Okay? Any questions on that? So uh, OS updates is going to be delivered through LifeGuard, but that requires the devices to be connected to the LifeGuard server, perhaps. Uh, so that's a good question to um, that, uh, uh, to Bruce Williams when he starts that. But the point is you should be able, to, if you are entitled for that update, you should be able to download it and then install it on your device. Just like today, you can go online and if you are entitled, you can get the latest BSP for a device, you could continue to do that. But that's a, I, I think you should ask that question to Bruce Williams, the distribution Okay, information on availability of these lifeguard patches, what it contains, what it fixes, what new feature it brings, all of that will be available on Zebra web website. Those who use EHS, anybody using EHS here? Okay, ah. Okay, so a couple of people using EHS and enterprise browser, they don't come integrated into your BSP, they're post loadable, you can download today and you can continue to download and install. And enterprise keyboard, anybody using enterprise keyboard? Okay, so enterprise keyboard is a tool available for you uh, that is bundled with BSP today. It's available out of box. Moving forward, it will be, uh, the latest one is also available for downloading. It is really a, a keyboard uh, customized for enterprise usage as opposed to Google's standard uh, keyboard. Okay, so that's lifeguard. I just wanted to bring you guys update on that one because it's so important for those who are used to um, uh, using EMDK updates and stage now updates. Uh, it's, it's important that you know. Okay, moving on to the one of the solutions that we are working on today. Some form of beta is already available. This is called NFC ticketing. <clears throat> uh, 
earlier we had uh, on uh, old TC75, sorry when I say old, it's just one year ago it seems like old now. Uh, we had uh, uh, what we call secure NFC. Secure NFC provided, uh, so Google provides uh, NFC. A lot of our devices have NFC support. You can use Google's uh, API and then you can read the NFC. But we are getting into the secure uh, NFC here, right? And secure NFC was added to TC75 just a year, year and a half ago. And there are APIs available uh, on EMDK. And this is a progression to uh, beyond that secure NFC. This is ticketing, NFC ticketing. In the first, uh, let me check it out. Okay. So you can see that NFC ticketing, um, currently the first version will be supporting Calypso. Calypso is, uh, is a standard that's mostly used in Europe than in US. US is really MyFair. So we will be supporting MyFair soon, but Calypso is going to be is available as a beta today. And there are some customers in Europe who are using it today. And so it is um, TC51, TC56, or what they used to call Iron Man. Anybody using TC5 access? Okay. So this is an add-on. So earlier models in TC70s, we would read the NFC through our mobile device. Now we are doing this through an add-on. Why are we doing this? Performance, security, all of these reasons. One of the uh, requirements for performance is you gotta be able to read the, the uh, NFC tags within 300 milliseconds. And uh, we have clocked less than 200 milliseconds, sometimes even less than that. So that is the performance that we are getting with this add-on that we are seeing. Where can it be used? Public transportation. That's the first thing we are, we are focusing right now, public transportation. Especially in Europe, in several countries, uh, uh, they, are, they are looking at uh, uh, this uh, accessory and the tools. Retail, hospitality, government, public sector, healthcare, all these can be used. If you guys need more information on this, um, Please contact me or uh, one of your uh, sales engineers and I will get you more information on this. So I'm not going to get into the details of all the, the advantages you get here, but the bottom line is why do we need it? It reduces cost. Why do we need the smart ticketing? That's the first one. Most of you already know that. You use that on it. Ooh. Smart lighting. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so smart ticketing. Um, so why we need to use smart ticketing? Most of you are already aware of it. You are using it on a daily basis. And what is this bringing? Is the mobility of it, right? Instead of having it in one place, these. Uh, 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 train operators, uh, I don't know what you call it, um, they can be walking around, uh, validating the tickets, taking the payments, printing receipts, that's the whole goal of this one, okay? And like we said, there are different ticketing technologies, MyFair, Calypso, and different countries use different technologies within those technologies. We, we are trying to make sure we support all of them. A train going from um, France to uh, Germany, right? They may have to read different technologies in order to make sure that you are supporting all different cards that are out there. And that's the whole goal here. And Zebra has printers, you can print your receipts. Zebra also has payment options and we are building payment, touch payment uh, into this uh, accessory. So that's also that adds the payment option as well. And we also plan on remote firmware update for this NFC module. You don't have to run and take it to uh, the, uh, the IT admin to update the firmware. Uh, when I say firmware, it may contain a lot of things. It could be firmware, it could be certificates, 
or it could be blacklisted tags, right? So all of that could be updated remotely without you having to take it back to the IT admins. So using your EMM, you push the updates through the mobile device, mobile device connects to the, the accessory, updates it, and it also makes sure you're not trying to update it while you're using the, the accessory or the mobile device. So we have built in all of those things in this. This is mostly for EMM support, not necessarily manually doing it. If you have to do it manually, you can do it. But uh, all the interfaces are, uh, are, are designed for EMM support to update it programmatically. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to go through a few of the APIs that we have created for you to... Um, there is another uh, session tomorrow on NFC ticketing and secure NFC, so I'm not going to get into the details of this today because we got a lot of other things to cover. Bottom line is you should be able to control your SAM, you should be able to access your tag and complete your uh, <laughs> NFC tag rating. Now, you might say, hey, Google is already providing this. Why do you need all of these things? What they're providing is a simple NFC read. Calypso technology, MyFair, specific SAM reading uh, and accessing tags through those are not supported by Android. Okay? And definitely secure NFC is not provided by Android. Okay, that's NFC ticketing, and then I'll move to UDI. Uh, any questions on NFC ticketing or, yeah? The add-on, the, the secure NFC, is that a Zebra product? Or that's, that a Z, that's a Zebra product. Is it on the Solution Builder already? I'm sorry? Is it on the Solution Builder already? Or no, it's it not. Beta? So that's why I was saying it's a beta product at this time. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Uh, and uh, okay. like I said, if you are interested in this, definitely I can help you with it. I have to see if our, any of our partners are. Yeah. Okay, uh, any other questions on NFC? Okay, so I'm gonna quickly jump to the YouTube here because I couldn't get this video to work on uh, inside the PowerPoint presentation. Now, it's going to say U.S., and I will get back to you how it is not just U.S. specific solution after the video, but let's talk about this one in a minute. Your passport compliance and a world of opportunity. Let Zebra take you on the journey. Recent FDA legislation has changed the rules for tracking and tracing medical devices in the US. As experts in solutions for product identification and the needs of the healthcare industry, Zebra understands the implications this legislation will have on your business. We can be there to help you to turn compliance into exciting opportunities. FDA legislation now means that from the start of manufacture right through to when finished goods are shipped, all parts must be tracked and traced to safeguard quality and compliance. All medical devices must now carry a unique device identifier or UDI label. It must be readable and scannable from the point of production, during shipment, through the product's safe and appropriate use and finally to its disposal. A UDI makes important information easily accessible and helps to ensure compliance, traceability, efficiency and patient safety. The supply chain begins at the manufacturer where a barcode is printed onto the medical device or diagnostic packaging. Device labelers also need to submit information about the product to a database administered by the FDA. Inside the package is a global trade item number, GTIN which makes reordering or diagnostic tests easier and makes the device's journey easy to track. The UDI also helps to tackle product counterfeiting and helps achieve patient safety. So if there is a product issue, the devices and diagnostic tests that need to be recalled can be easily identified. 
This brings challenges. However, Zebra can help to turn these challenges into opportunities. Isn't it time to start your journey with Zebra? I think that's the end of it. All right, let me get back to, so it, it mentions US, why is it important? The UDI, uh, and it says uh, uh, the FDI, that's the, uh, that's the US uh, Drug Administration. Uh, so it, it says it is mandated by that, and I know that UDI is US specific standard, and I was told that there is a standard here in the UK as well but the, sorry, uh, in, in uh, Europe as well. The goal is to make sure that you have one global database because people are selling medical devices from here, ph pharmaceutical device, uh, uh, medicine from here or from there to here. So the goal is to have one big database that tracks all of this, the life cycle. They said the three things, right? Manufacture, usage, and disposal. So it's all uh, tracked. So as part of that, uh, you know, so if you are uh, working with the US companies, you will have to follow this. There are some guidelines and the deadlines that they're pursuing. But we have designed the system in such a way that it's configurable, not just for the UDI, it could be configured for other standards as well. So you could configure our scanning up, uh, tools to scan the right barcode that is applicable for you, okay? So well, what is this about UDI? UDI is this set of GTIN, the, the, they mentioned that, right? And it supports three different, uh, uh, so why did UDI come about? And the, the, they have tons and tons of data on how things went wrong because we didn't track things. And you can see that in Hong Kong, it took two weeks to find 30 patients affected by a recall of a hip replacement. So if they were tracking it right, they probably would have caught it. So I'm just giving you two, three or four different things. I'm sure this is a problem across all countries, okay? So that's why this came by. And here is uh, uh, the manufacturing, labeling, distribution, point of care, inventory, and then at the end, disposal. That's the life cycle of these devices. And how it works is Unfortunately, there is no one label that you can say everybody must use this label standards. There will be a lot of labels, different uh, formats. And th within that label, there will be UDI specific barcodes and there will be non-UDI specific barcodes for their own use for other purposes. So instead of asking all of you to go scan everything and we'll figure out and then figure out which one is really good, what we are giving you is this. We will look at the barcodes. We will take the image of the barcodes, all the barcodes that are there. We will figure out which ones are UDI specific and we will tell you what UDI uh, standard it's following. And then we'll pass you the data field by field. Actually, Eddie is sitting over there. He has a demo set up uh, in the hallway. Um, if you guys are interested, please go and take a look at it, right? So all you have to do is call our APIs and then take the viewfinder, put it on the label and scan it. If there are 15 barcodes and there are only five uh, uh, UDI specific, we read only the file and then send it back to you. And if you try to scan a barcode that's not UDI, we won't read it. Okay, and this is uh, for those who want to use this in data wedge, this is where you get, uh, you, you get to set the decode mode, whether you want, we call it smart decode. The goal is not just to add UDI, to add other decoding capabilities as well. So even though we are supporting uh, uh, the UDI standard now with the smart decode option, we should be able to add more option in there. So currently, uh, you will get either HIBCC, GS1, or ICCBA standards. Those are the three things that are supported by UDI. And then you get the barcode data, just like you get in any other barcode data. 
but you get additional information in that smart data bundle that gives you the AI and then it gives you the value. For example, GTIN number, that gives you the value, production date, exp expiration date, and there are a bunch of five or six different uh, information. It gives you that. And you can get it as a string or a byte array, uh, just like any other data wedge data. And we have the same thing in the UMDK. You can get and you can set, you want, you're working on UDI so that it can read the UDI. Now, if you didn't set the UDI, and you can still read the, uh, the, the barcodes, but you're not gonna be able to read all of them at the same time. And another thing is if you happen to focus on a different barcode that is not UDI, it's still gonna read it because you didn't set it to UDI mode, okay? So just like what you did with in, in uh, Data Wedge, you can do also this through EMDK APIs. You can set what standards you want to support. You can support them all, you can support only one. And you get the data back just like you would get in Data Wedge, just the regular data plus the smart data. Okay, there are some, uh, uh, UDI is gonna come on, uh, 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 our TC5X uh, um, healthcare devices. Uh, it's going to be released pretty soon. And if you need more information, uh, I've given you some uh, links there. Any questions on UDI or any just remarks? Have you heard of UDI before? Go ahead. UDI is in current version of the I'm sorry, say it again. It's uh, possible to to read UDI in current uh, EMDK? No, you need an update to the EMDK, mm -hmm. which is gonna come out very soon. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, a lot of these things are being done now, right? So, they're not out there. Some of them are ready to be used, but not formally released, but some are still being worked on a proof of concept and I'm trying to introduce you guys to those ideas, and if you are interested, I wanna pull you guys in and then get your feedback into that one. Yeah. The next one we are working on is battery manager solution. The whole idea is if you have your uh, personal phone, you know the status of your battery, when you charged it, how long it might last, what you can do, what you can do with the battery that you have. So you know that. But in a, an enterprise model, right, unless you are doing bring your own device to work, if you are pooling devices at work, like most of the uh, Zebra customers do, is you have a device, you have a bunch of batteries. And when your shift starts, you're gonna walk in, pick up a battery, plug it in, and then start using it. Okay, what's the problem with that? Well, the problem is you don't know the battery that you are picking. And we don't know how, you are gonna, how, how long you are gonna use the battery, whether if your shift is six hours to eight hours and you are doing a lot of scanning, we don't know if it's gonna last all the six to eight hours, right? And that's where we wanna help you try, uh, see what the, not just the charge status of the battery, but also the state of health of the battery and move beyond that and then say, if it is charged this much, if the state of health is this much, and you're gonna use for six to eight hours, and you're gonna do scan intensive work. In other words, profiling what you're doing and then give you a suggestion on what battery to use. And if your battery is, cannot be used for what you're doing, what do you do with the battery? That's also, uh, you want to get rid of the battery, or moving forward, how do we uh, help use that data to order more batteries? If you are a partner and you are selling batteries to your customers, right? Until they call you and say, hey, I need batteries, or, uh, or you visit them, try to figure this out, what if you get this information? Or you are a plant manager and the, the report comes up saying that, so such and such a guy or gal is trying to use the battery and uh, it probably won't last. 
it is the state of health has come down so so low it cannot be used anymore what do you do with them those are the kind of things we are trying to come up with so so the whole idea is uh, I, yeah i explained kind of what uh, what this slide is about i'm going to skip to the next one so the whole idea is this is a an on prem four wall solution that means you have a place within your four walls that collects data from the devices on the batteries and then helps you make decisions now optionally that data could go to zebra's website and then we could help you analyze even further but that's only optional yeah. okay so so what what are the capabilities the capabilities is viewing how what batteries are be, being used on what devices and if it drops to a certain point you should be able to say if my state of health is 20% i want to uh, notify the user you got to stop using it and use a new battery give them option to change the battery and uh, if they don't change the battery after three times or four times and it has the state of health has come to a point that no one can use it tag that battery and next time someone is trying to use it in a different device a different person is trying to use it in a different device we say aha uh -huh, you can't use this because this has been tagged as unusable so you got to get rid of this throw it in this bin mark it scan it and throw it in this bin so that's the whole idea so and also this uh, whole um, <coughs> battery best battery selection is understanding what you're doing how long you're going to work and then be smart about this and then capture that and use it next time when someone tries to use that use a battery right and uh, and also not only that person how do we make sure no one else uses that or if they use it it's going to be good for that so that's what they call predictive so you you try to predict uh, how the the usage is going to be done so i i talked about profiles they call it energy consumption profiles ecp and then the predictive and prescriptive model one is diagnostic understanding what the problem is another one is predictive that this might happen because of the usage that you are doing and the last one is really prescriptive what can you do about it right and then i talked about on premise four wall uh, solution this uh, proof of concept is going to come out very soon and then uh, uh, with an option to push it to the cloud so that uh, zebra can also try to make better products out of that analytics that you get okay uh, so just in a nutshell the plant manager or it admin whoever wants to use it they don't have to do anything there will be tools and the users using the devices don't have to do anything this is a background operation and without you cons consuming a lot of battery we are giving that information to the manager and manager gets to see this and take action on it okay so that is the whole idea one is state of charge and state of health and what do we using that data what do we uh, how do we use the battery information okay any questions on battery solution if this uh this part of the abs system it is going to be part of, so on prem is going to be um contained within the four walls and then once it starts going out it's going to be part of the abs yes it will be at what level is the sdk going to support this is it just low level apis or are there high level uh, tools or applications so this is really a tool application I don't see an API that you would control this. There is configuration, what the manager wants to do. How do you say what my threshold of the battery is? What is good? What is bad? What is to a point that you can't use it? That is dependent on the users. We won't know that. 
And that's where we get the tools, including EMM capability, so that you can push that information and say, if the state of health is less than 40%, I want you to stop using that. That is configurable. And where would you push that information? It goes to all devices, and devices check what the battery is, and if battery falls in the threshold, it sends that information to the server, and it also notifies the user. That's an ABS server? It will be an ABS, yes. Okay. Questions? Okay, so the next one is also, um, uh, also healthcare related uh, solution. It, it's very simple. When someone asked for this, I thought, who, who wants to use this? This is so simple and everybody does it. Why would you want to do it? But I was wrong. Apparently, there are a lot of hospitals uh, they are asking for this kind of a tool. It's very simple, but still, I guess nobody wanted to do this. Uh, so the whole idea is you walk into a patient room. The, the currently, they, they usually push the, the cart with the PC. And it kind of plugs into that whole UDI. You, you, before you use something, you scan and make sure you, you, you're using the right thing, right? So this one is you go to the, um, <clears throat> the patient, get the patient information, get the medical, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, drugs information, and then you gotta enter it on the PC application. And so what is the big deal? The big deal is they don't wanna take the cart into the room. They wanna leave the cart outside, walk into the room, do all this, get the information, and put it into the PC. Or they may not have they may not have time to turn around and type all of these things. So this is where you can use one of our healthcare devices. Uh, and bo bottom line is you are sending data to the PC and then um, uh, putting that into the line of business application on, on the PC. So let me just uh, run this demo real quick. In this video, we will show you how to use Zebra Cart Scan. We will cover how to set it up and also how to use the application. So let's first talk about what Zebra Cart Scan is. Zebra Cart Scan is an application that was developed to allow you to scan in a barcode from a Zebra Android mobile device and then deliver that scan data to a PC over Bluetooth. And the way that it works is, is when nurses are using their mobile device and they're away from their cart, it allows them to you know, scan in a barcode right at the patient uh, bedside. And that information would go instantly to the PC into an application on the PC. So um, there's two components to using Zebra Cart Scan. There's the mobile device, and then there's also the PC. So let's go through the details. Okay, so you're now ready to launch the card scan application. So go into the application launcher and tap the card scan application. The application will load and will tell you the current status of whether the device is paired with the PC. By default, it'll say that it's not connected to the PC. You'll find the status in the top portion of the application. Um, it'll also show you the last four digits of the Mac and Bluetooth Mac address for that device. The next step is to, is to associate the device with the PC. In order to do that, you need to tap on the barcode button that's inside the card scan application and then point the device to the barcode that is on your display. You should then see a Bluetooth pairing request pop up on your device. Simply tap the pair button and then the, the device will pair with the PC. You will notice in the top portion of the card scan application, you'll see the current status, and it will say that it's connected to the PC, and it will also include the, the Bluetooth MAC address of the PC that it is connected to. 
You are now ready to use the card scan application. In order to test this, the best thing to do is to open an application. Um, in this case, I'm just opening my, um, my browser. And when I scan my barcode, it's going to basically send keystrokes to whatever application is currently running. In your case, you would be opening your line of business application where you would want the barcode data to appear. I've created a barcode that has the URL of zebra.com. When I scan it using card scan on my device, it'll appear on the PC wherever the cursor is. You will also see the barcode in the scan data field on card scan. In some cases, you may want to send an extra tab or an enter key after the barcode data has been read. In order to do that, you need to set up a few more settings. On the mobile device, tap the settings button that's in the upper right hand corner and then tap Profiles. You'll then want to long press on the default profile and then tap Edit Profile. You'll now see the settings page for card scan. In the first group of settings, it's about the session timeout. So this is how long the device will be connected to your PC. The next group is about enabling the Bluetooth output. You obviously want to have that enabled in order for card scan on the device to be able to communicate to the PC. After that, you'll see data formatting. This is where we process any of the barcode data after it's read from the actual barcode. So this is where we may want to automatically prepend or, or append information to the barcode data. In the formatting options, you'll be able to either um, send uh, prefix the data, the barcode data, so if you want to send some characters before the barcode data um, or actually add some characters after the barcode data as a suffix, you have a, an option to do that. Uh, most people leave those settings alone. Um, there's a few other settings as well for sending the information as hex um, and possibly also to send them all as uppercase. This all depends on how your application is expecting to receive this data. So in this case, I'm going to automatically send an enter key. Um, you would use this if your application is expecting a barcode and you basically need to hit enter to hit the default button in order to move to the next step. So now hit the back button to save your settings. So now let me demonstrate this by opening up my browser again. And this time when I scan the barcode, it's going to not only send the barcode data, which by the way, remember is the URL, but it's also going to automatically add an enter key and then you'll see the, the, the page actually load. In this video, we will show you how to use Zebra Carts. Right again. Okay, so that was the card scan. Uh, as we are talking to different hospitals, they are asking for more features in here. We are currently assessing a lot of other requests coming in as well. Uh, any question on card scan? Is that truly downloadable? Or is there a license? It is, there is no license. It's going to be downloadable as of now yeah, because that's what yeah, I was doing. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it uses Data Wedge in the back, but there are some requirements that Data Wedge can support, doesn't support for the uh, hospital, uh, so the healthcare requirements. So that's where some of them are local to card scan applications, some of them are. So this is really using Data Wedge in the background for scanning. It's sending intent to Data Wedge to modify Data Wedge settings as well but you also can change the settings of the application itself. And on, on, the, on the PC side, line of business applications have a uh, lot of requirements, how the data is entered. We are looking at all of them, so it is going to be enhanced to include more features. Okay. Okay, and the last one is really about the development option and some of the problems that so some of you are already using EMDK. EMDK Profile Manager is really a very powerful tool. For those of you who don't know what EMDK Profile Manager is, it is a GUI-based development tool that's available in EMDK. And you can use that to configure your data capture options, configure your devices, including uh, MX settings. 
right? MX is our framework that gives you all these uh, value add uh, features that Android doesn't give. So I, I remember on C Windows Mobile time, uh, if you had to write some, something like this, uh, just let's say just modifying Wi-Fi settings, you had to write at least 30 to 45 lines of code. Not only that, you had to go online, figure out what those fields are and how to use them and when not to use it. If you use it the wrong way, wrong order, what is going to ha happen? It was very complicated and this is where the power of the profile manager is. It is a GUI, it comes up with a GUI. So Eddie back there has this application for demo for those of you who don't know Profile Manager or what this next step in that feature uh, is bringing, please go see it, but I do have. So as part of this Profile Manager is, like I said, it's a GUI assistant. You drag and drop and then you, you pick the options and then your line of code is gonna be two to five lines of code maximum and as far as how many features you can modify in this manner? Uh, guess up to 300 or even more. There are up to 50 different components of this, what we call CSPs, and they all have different features. They're all organized uh, based on uh, the, their functionality, right? One could be app manager controlling the application on your device, and another could be Wi-Fi control, another could be Bluetooth control, another could be data capture control. All of that is by click, 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 and then few lines of code. So, but after that profile manager was created, people loved it, but still they had to understand, I have five different devices with three BSPs, and I don't know what features are available uh, on what device. So we went and created this documentation online, which is very comprehensive, very usable. But the documentation says, you gotta go and find out the version of this component, this component, that component, that component, in order to figure out if that feature is supported or not. Now, you can spend a lot of time and understand all this and then figure out at the end the feature is supported or not, or we enhance this feature, what if you just uh, connect your device one or two, same device, different device, we tell you whether a feature is supported or not. So this is a tool to help you with development, increase productivity, and also reduce the errors. Definitely reduce the phone calls you will have to make into Zebra asking for help, okay? So I, I mentioned this, right? This is, this is how it looks. <coughs> These are the available features. You add what features you want to apply. You can create as many profiles as you want. You can say profile one, two, three, four. Under profile one, these are the features. I want to add them. And then once you add them, you get all these fields. You can change however you want. And then when you're ready, you can apply them. That's the whole goal. So I mentioned what the, this is how it looks like. Uh, USB manager, right? And then, whether to enable uh, USB module usage or not, some versions support it, some don't. Well, uh, here at least in this example, everything supported. But the point is in some of the cases, it may not be supported in an older version. And now you gotta figure out if you have older version or not. And that's the problem we are trying to solve here. Not necessarily problem, but it saves some time and errors. Okay, so let me just play this. The challenge that you have with the current version is when you create a profile, you kind of have to pick, you know, the version of MX that you're targeting, okay? Um, and you have to do this because, you know, there are features that um, are supported and not supported depending on the combination of parameters that are on your device, including the OSX version, the MX version, Android level, um, etc. So, for example, um, Browser Manager is only supported on Jelly Bean. So, if you don't have a Jelly Bean device, uh, you won't be able to use Set uh, Default Homepage, right? Uh, or let's say App Manager. If you're trying to uh, launch an application, 
it will only be supported if you have a device that has version 5.1. So when you're developing uh, using the current version of Profile Manager, you have to kind of bounce back and forth between the documentation and then select the right uh, the right version here and um, and create your, your profiles that way and add your features. Okay, there's no guidance inside of here. So that's what we've changed and now I'll show you the new Profile Manager which allows you to see all this information right from within uh, Profile Manager. So now in this new Profile Manager, when you go to create a, a new profile, and you have devices connected to your development uh, PC uh, via USB, we automatically pull information from the list of devices that are connected. So in this case, I have two devices connected. I have an MC40, which is running MX4.4, and I have a TC55, which has been upgraded to MX6.0. So it looks at all this information that we get programmatically from the connected devices, and then it suggests kind of like the best version of MX that you should use in order to build your application. So it kind of warns you here that, you know, hey, listen, uh, we need to pick MX 4.4 because that's kind of like the lowest common denominator. Okay, so if I decide to, to go ahead and try to create one uh, anyway, that's not the right version, uh, we'll show some, some messages here. So let's say new profile 6.0. Okay, let's click create. Now, if I go in and I want to select, uh, let's say, App Manager, App Manager has some ability to install applications, and this is both supported on, on these flavors, but if I look at the documentation, App Manager doesn't allow launching of application unless you're running 5.1. So if I try to launch an application or configure it, it's going to say that, hey, this is partially supported. And if I click into it, it'll actually tell you it's not supported on this device, MC40. So it warns you here, and then it kind of tells you what devices it's not supported on down here. Okay. So now let's pick a, um, another feature like uh, Browser Manager. So Browser Manager is only available on Jelly Bean devices. So you need to have this OS X version. So if I look at it, um, it's basically telling me none of them are supported, and it lists the devices here. So this will help a developer in developing their applications correct the first time without having to go through a lot of trial and error. We'll be able to easily see what is supported and what's not supported or partially supported on the specific devices as long as they're connected and um, you know the information can be accessed. Now, what's nice about this is all this data that's driving this compatibility information is all coming from a single source. So right from Tech Docs, we're using uh, like a JSON object to store all of this compatibility information. So um, so the EMDK can uh, intelligently pull that information from online and get, you know, updates to that information. So if we need to make corrections, it could then programmatically pull this information and correct the compatibility information dynamically without having to install new versions of the EMDK. So that's a nice new uh, innovation feature that we have for Profile Manager. Okay. I think that's it. Uh, my time's up. Any questions? I have two questions. Uh, one, uh, is there any plan for uh, having EMDK for Windows 10 Mobile? Windows 10? 10 Mobile, yes. Uh, no plans. No plans. No plans. So plans. There, it will not be supported? Uh, you, you don't need an EMDK because Microsoft, uh, were you in the previous session with uh, Ian? Uh, he, he mentioned that um, Microsoft is a closed OS. It does not allow you to create vendor specific uh, APIs like scanning APIs and Microsoft themselves provide all those APIs so there is really no reason to create new APIs unless it's really required. I have another addition if I'm So the, in uh, Android Nougat, there is a new feature that uh, has like the device management and device owner. So uh -oh. how will that work with the application manager? Uh, okay, so um, that requires a uh, lengthy discussion on how things work. Right. So we are bringing a system uh, for EMM vendors to access and if you are going to become your own EMM, how to access that. 
and what is what they call the, the managed configuration is the word they use. It's no longer AFW anymore, right? Android proof work. So managed configuration, how to use managed configuration, how to become device owners, and what do we do behind the scenes if you are the device owners? How do you interface with us, and how do we, how do we respond back? So that's all being worked on, and very soon that information is going to come out when we are ready. It is, it is being implemented right now as we speak. So I just did not want to provide that information <coughs> in this uh, because it's still being implemented. But probably in a month or two, you will hear a lot more about it. Now you can keep in touch with me. I can give more information when it's available. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Thank you, thank you. So that, that did come, uh, uh, that request did come to us. It is in our backlog to work on that one. Let's just take a note of that again, Eddie. Okay, Any, anything else? Okay, thanks a lot, guys.